All right. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to the stream. Uh, we are about to get started. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at uh, Lychee Slicer. You know, if anybody does resin printing, um, I'm not sure that I can say this strongly enough. There is no reason for you to use any other software besides Lychee Slicer. Um, and there are various reasons why. And although um, there are a few, you know, there's a few issues with Lychee Slicer at the moment, and we may run into a couple of those, um, their team is like heavily dedicated to, you know, bug repair and listening to the community, adding features that they love. Um, aside from that, even with any other, anything that might happen, uh, far and away the best software we can get um, on, on the, in, in the industry when it comes to doing pre-supports and slicing. So um, with that in mind, we're gonna be talking about Lychee Slicer Pro today. Um, some features are not available to free users. Um, and unfortunately, I haven't been a free user uh, in a couple of years. So I'm not even sure which features are free and which are pro because I've been using pro for so long. So, uh, so if you follow the class and you realize that I'm doing something you can't do, chances are that's one of those features that you can't do in, in pro. Uh, so, um, I recommend buying pro. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not sponsored by lychee or anything at lychee lychee. I'm probably going to do that all, all night. Uh, so I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just love their product. It's what I work in. I think it's the best out there. And so I'm just going to... Oh, so uh, T. Slater just said you can get a 15-day trial of Pro as well. So I I pretty much guarantee if you watch this video, you watch some of my pre-support classes, and you try the Pro, like you're just going to buy it. And, uh, and I, I believe it's worth every penny. So uh, with that said, a couple of quick announcements um, for those of you who uh, are making it from Instagram or Facebook or uh, some other, you know, uh, Discord server or anything like that. It looks like so Zuck, uh, Z Zucky Driver says they just got a 30 day pro trial. So that's fantastic. Um, so. <laughs> I lost track. This is what I'm talking about. I got to be careful not to get too distracted here. Um, so if you found us through some other means and you're not familiar with our Discord community, I would definitely encourage you to come and join our Discord community. Uh, we just made a little over 4,100 members. Uh, we're well on our way to 5,000 members. And uh, I believe we have the most friendly, the most helpful like you're gonna, if you come with problems, you're gonna get help. If you come to just show off stuff that you're doing, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna congratulate you. Um, it's if you want to chat about tabletop gaming or three D printing, um, w you know this is the place for you. Like I I don't know how better to explain that, but like I I actively try on groups on Facebook, and I just regret it every time. I I. I've had a little better experience on Reddit, but I hear it's just kind of like a, a difficult place. So if you just want a fun place, um, I'm there every day. Chris is there every day. J3D is there every day. These guys um, are admins on the server and the three of us are constantly helping people. Um, so I would, I would love to invite you to join our Discord. Also, if you join our Discord, you if you're familiar with the Cones of Calibration, we have version two available only on our Discord right now until I officially release them. We also have the Tesseract is what we're currently calling it, which is another calibration system that, um, that J3D came up with that is excellent. And between the two of those, you don't need any other calibration in the world. You can do any any printer anytime, anywhere between our two parts. So um, <clears throat> I recently did a fundraiser, um, and I'm sure you guys mostly know. Uh, we did a fundraiser for um, our, uh, our good friend Morgan. She has a puppy named Miles. Miles needed a very expensive surgery. Our community banded together, and we raised enough money to help Morgan get the surgery with Miles. Miles had the surgery. He is doing excellent. The vet is, so it turns out that, that Miles had cancer near his ribs. They had to remove three of his ribs. Um, but the vet is pretty positive. They got every last bit of cancer. Um, the chances that he'll get cancer again are pretty low. 
and he's recovering nicely. And if anything, he got much more time on this earth with us uh, as a result of our community banding together and raising money to help. So uh, I am super appreciative of you guys for helping with that. Um, another announcement I have today is <clears throat> we are, okay, so if you've been with us for a while, you may remember I did a thousand member giveaway and that was a huge, I think we had 23 different artists donate um, a model or a set or whatever it is they wanted to donate to give away to our community as a thank you for being amazing. And we are about to hit that 5,000 member milestone and so I have begun the process of organizing a 5,000 member giveaway. And in one day, I think we've matched the same amount of artists that we had on the 1,000 member giveaway. And I only just announced it a couple hours ago. So I got a feeling this is gonna be a big one. I'm gonna try to reach out to artists. If you guys know any artists that may be interested in participating, everybody's welcome. I, I love tabletop gaming, but even if the artist doesn't do tabletop gaming stuff and they, they want to come in and participate and contribute to our community, really this is uh, an opportunity for some artists to get their work in the hands of uh, people who maybe have never heard of them before. And at the same time, just a huge thank you to everybody who you know joined our community, participated, um, helped anybody just you know, was friendly in general and, and helped us make a great community. Uh, so that is coming very soon. We, I think right now we have, uh, I want to say it's 4,100 and let's see, 132 members. We gain about 150 members. Um, we gain about 150 members a week or so. So we should be there pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> so soon, we're going to do that. Keep your eyes open. Uh, also, I know a lot of people join Discord servers and then mute them. I'm going to encourage you not to. I'm going to do that for a couple of reasons. I know that I ping. This was a matter of discussion the other day. I might add everyone for news related to our community. Um, I'm not going to stop doing that. Um, and I know that sometimes you might like be annoyed you go and it's like nothing you care about. But at the same time, I make these announcements for free giveaways through those pings. And if you mute the server, you might miss them. Um, so I hope that you stay. I hope that you love the place and that you find it valuable enough to, to kind of hang out with us every day. So, all right, enough there. Let's talk about Lychee. That's what we're here for today. So I am going to... <clears throat> I'm probably going to cover some stuff that a lot of you already know, like how do we add a new printer? How do we kind of adjust settings, stuff like that. But I, I want to make sure I cover a few, a few ins and outs of like where we can locate certain things in Lychee for users who might be just now starting, right? Our goal at Table Flip Foundry is to help everybody have a really good experience to get their printing going. And that means people who bought their printers yesterday. So I apologize if at the beginning, we're gonna cover some things that you're like, oh, well, I don't need to know this. I promise we'll get into a couple of like slightly more advanced things. We're gonna talk about some shortcuts that I use when I'm doing supports. We are gonna get a 3D sneak peek at a Kickstarter. Um, and you guys are gonna see the model for that Kickstarter here in a second which is by the Lions Tower Adventures Guild, also known as Lions Tower. Um, they have a, a current Kickstarter going, and um, you guys may know the story about, about Dan and Lions Tower, but there may be no Table Flip Foundry. Tony, what's up, man? There may be no Table Flip Foundry without Lions Tower. And so um, I'm really excited he's doing this Kickstarter. I think a lot of you guys are really gonna enjoy it. So we're not really doing supports today, but I figure I can have a model on the plate. And Dan is one of our partner creators. So uh, you guys get to see this, this awesome thing here. So we are gonna start with, we're gonna kind of start from the beginning. Let me switch over here. So welcome to Lychee Slicer, Lychee Slicer. I think it's Lychee. Um, and we're gonna talk about a few, <coughs> excuse me, a few, um, basics, basic things. Like, what do we do? I just started up uh, Lychee Slicer. Uh, I have no idea where to start. Now, there's tons of content online. I think Lychee has their own YouTube channel. They're going to have a lot of this information there as well. Um, but you need to add a printer. 
in order to get started. So you can see these are all the printers I own. Uh, so you're just going to go add and then you're going to pick up a new a new printer. So let's say I am going to buy the, I don't know, what do I want? Okay, here. I was looking recently at the Mega. I, I don't know if the Mega's on here. Mega, here we go. The Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. Let's say that I was able to just purchase that printer, exciting for me, and I'm ready to get started. So first things first, it's going to load in here. It might be the only one. It might be one of many. Hey, Julian, welcome. Julian is from uh, is from the Lychee team, so uh, welcome. Uh, so let's say that, um, you know, I just bought this new printer. I want to add it to, to Lychee and get things going. What will happen is you're going to... You're going to start with just like a really basic default. None of these settings for the, this is the resin area. None of these settings on the resin area are really going to at all pertain to anything you're doing, right? They, they don't know what resin you're using when you load the printer. And so it's important that we start to establish those things. So one of my favorite resins, I'm going to kind of, yeah, I think Julian, uh, Julian's either in France or Belgium, which means it is probably two in the morning or some such. So we are uh, blessed to have you here. I appreciate it very much. Okay. So when you come in, you have a new, uh, a new resin profile, but it's a very default profile. So none of these settings are really going to be very relevant to your resin specifically. Although some of these settings are going to, um, they're going to be fine for like the printer you're loading. So like your lift speeds, your retract speeds, light intensity, stuff like that. Light intensity is another discussion. Um, some of these are going to be okay to get started. But the important part here is, uh, thank you, beginner. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Some of you guys are first time chatting on, on stream. So welcome. Um, yeah, I figured as much. Julian, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to come in. I appreciate you staying up late for us. Um, if anybody needs uh, any helps with Lychee specifically, obviously you can go to our Discord, but Lychee also has their Discord. You should swing by there. They are very active as a team. So, Okay, so when you load up your, your settings, most of these are going to start off in a usable environment for you, something at least to get the ball rolling. You're going to want to dial in these settings later as you move, but for now, <clears throat> the, this is like, okay, this exposure time is something you're going to want to adjust. Um, layer height, maybe I like 50. I print everything at 50, but you can choose a different layer height. Um, your weight before print. These are two stage motion control and light off delay. These are conflicting settings. So you don't want both of these to be on. You'll have problems. So you're going to pick one. Most people are now using two stage motion control often referred to as TSMC. You're going to turn TSMC off. And what that does is that control so when your your printer lifts it will it will lift in two different stages and those two different stages can be controlled at different speeds so you're usually going to lift slow at first and then fast at the end and you're going to retract fast at first and slow at the end so here you can see we have a lift speed of 60 and 65 but our lift distance is only seven on the front end so what this means is um, we're only lifting seven millimeters and we're only doing it at one setting. So what you might choose to do instead is lift, is lift three millimeters and four millimeters. So it'll be three slow and then four fast. And we want three slow, which is going to be, let's say in this case, we're going to do 80 and fast will be 150. So it'll lift slow at 80 millimeters per second for three millimeters and then a lift at 150 for four millimeters. And you're gonna do the same thing. So let's say uh, you wanna go fast on the way down, but then slow down right at the end. The weight before print is pretty much the only setting you're gonna need. Uh, weight after print and weight after lift aren't really particularly necessary in our case. Um, I choose one second most of the time. It depends on the size of your printer. This is a very large printer. And what we're doing is when you push the plate back down into the, the vat, we're gonna push a lot of resin around. We want that resin to stop moving and then we start the print. So this time, maybe on a, on a printer this big would be 1.5 seconds. If you have a much smaller printer, half a second. 
Also, the slower that we retract back into the thing, the less time we have. So all of these settings are going to be really important when you're brand new. They're going to be where you live for a while. So you're going to set up your printer. You're going to choose a resin. Now, Lychee has a, a community resin system where you add a new resin and you can pick maybe a brand. So it just so happens that I use the Frozen Aqua 4K Gray. And what they give you is like a list of layer heights, exposure times, speeds. Um, I'm going to advise you not to use 240 millimeters per minute. Uh, there's a long talk about that. That's not what we're here for right now. Um, but you can start off with something like this. So you can add this resin to your Sonic Mini 8K or Mega 8K, and it's going to bring in all these settings. I'm going to actually, since we're all here and we got a bunch of people, I am, I'm going to state this pretty strongly. Like, please do not do this. Please do not have extremely fast lift speeds. I don't care if people tell you it works, it's perfect, it's better than everything. I promise you it's not. Um, if you are an expert at 3D printing, do whatever you want. But if you are brand new, please don't do this. Go with something reasonable. 150 millimeters and less. And less, I mean like, if you don't have two-stage motion control, then just do 80. And on your retract speed, just do 80. Like. Once you get the ball rolling and you understand printing better, come in and start messing with this stuff and dialing it in. But when you're new and you're first starting and you don't know the difference about what's happening, this is not good. If you use this type of lift speed and your model has some area that is considered a suction cup, you can damage your FEP and stretch it you can i've even seen j3d has done tests where he has shown the arm on his printer flexing in the middle of trying to lift because the lift speeds were were this fast so please please don't do this like it's i know we all want to print as fast as possible but not at the sacrifice of our machines um and possibly print quality so avoid that if you're new run 80 run 100 100 is totally fine um but definitely don't run this fast. Okay, so that's basically it. That you add a printer, you can come and add a new resin, um, and then you can find something you know like that matches what you have. At first, you may not know exactly what's good, bad, or otherwise, but that's what our Discord community is for. Jump in before you start your first print. Jump in and say, "Hey, uh, this is what I'm about to run. What do you guys think?" And somebody's going to come back and be like, "Ah, no, no, no!" <laughs> like change a few of these things. And if you have more questions, you can tell. You can tell us exactly like, hey, uh, why is it this way? Why shouldn't we run faster? And, and we're going to get you a, an answer. So, But this is a great way to get you started. Now, this is not going to be the, the be-all, end-all for you. We're not going to finish with these community profiles because part of what these community profiles don't account for are other variables that exist uh, for you that didn't exist for the, for the other people who use them. Um, also we can't promise that everybody who does these community profiles knows what they're doing. And so, uh, like here's a great example. This person used three millimeters of lift height on this size printer. That's not possible. So it'll get you a starting point, but worst case scenario, you ask, just come on the community, jump, jump in the resin printing section and just say, Hey, Hey, here's a screenshot of my settings. Am I about to mess it up? And we're going to jump in and tell you what, what you need to fix. Okay. So now that we have a printer, we're, we're like ready to go. A lot of people are they either, they looked around or they just clicked around and they looked at this magic button. They said, magic auto, 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 everything. And, uh, and then they had, they said, I'm feeling lucky. For, for the purposes of this, this model is quite hefty. Like it's a very heavy model um, data wise and everything will move really slow. So I'm going to try to find um, a smaller model, something easier for us for us to work with. Um, oh, well, since we're here, uh, it, for about a year, I didn't even realize this button existed, but this objects panel is where you can control objects on your plate. So let's say I'm going to bring in, this is my personal D and D character that lion's tower did for me. His name is dust. So now that I have dust in the, like on the build plate, 
We will notice that he's sort of sideways like this. I don't want that. So my shortcut is go on plate, go to the bottom and click the bottom and he's going to stand up. Now this isn't going to give me like the right orientation, but it's going to get me to a place where I can, I can more readily, um, it's just more identifiable for me when he's standing up and not laying on his back. Um, so in this objects manager, I can turn on or off objects that I don't want to see, or I don't want to support right now. Now I don't use this function very often. Um, but you may find it, you may find it useful, uh, to know that it's there. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so we're going to work with this. So you might initially say, Hey, the magic button sounds like magic auto orient auto auto supports, optimize supports. Um, if an object is hidden, it does not get sliced. No, it is not. It's no longer part of your printer. It is part of the LYS. It is not part of the printer. Um, oh, that's a good one. We'll talk about that, Chris. Just uh, make sure to remind me so I don't I don't forget. So, um, okay, so we've got our object. He's visible. We're, we're thinking we're brand new. Let's hit this button and we're going to hit it. So what this is going to do is this is going to figure out an orientation that it wants. It's going to throw some supports down for you and then it's going to try to optimize those supports. So... As much as I love lychee, and you guys already know lychee, lychee, as much as I love lychee, and you guys already know that I love it, I've already spoken on that, please don't use this and print with it. It is it is not enough, right? It, it, on the surface, it seems like, hey, I can click one button and I'm printing. Um, but unfortunately, this might be a way for you to shortcut some of the work if you want to use it, but you really should stop, learn everything about what's taking place here on your own first before you, excuse me, before you start using some of these features. This, this print will not print. Like there's just not enough here for this to actually work. And so this is one of those features I, I don't use, I don't advocate for. Um, there are very few use cases I found this to actually be helpful. But I do use the magic button and I use it every single time I work. And so this is how I use the magic button. I turn off auto, auto orientation because I know the best orientation for the model. I turn off auto supports because I do the supports. I know it's best for the supports. I never optimize. Optimize is another word for parenting. We can talk about parenting in a minute. Uh, bracing supports, I turn that off too because we don't have any supports to brace, but I leave raft on. What this is going to do is it's gonna provide two functions for me that I will forget <laughs> if I don't do this workflow. So I load up a model, first thing I do, magic button, turn off these four and I leave raft on. This is going to lift my model five millimeters and it's going to add the raft that I want. So this solves two problems for me in, in like, I put it as just make it part of my workflow. And then once I work, when I finish this model, I load up the next model, all of these save and they're off. So the magic button might be like, it's green. It's, it's, um, uh, it's specifically there, different color than everything. You want to click it as a new person, be aware you're, you're going to struggle. It's better that you learn this stuff. You learn about what's happening before you start allowing it to just happen without you. So um, Beginner Gundam says, what is the purposes, purpose of rafting? I will, let me demonstrate that very quickly. We're not really going to get into like the whys and hows of 3D printing during this. We're just going to be looking at features in Lychee. But to answer your question, if I were to just place a support with no raft, that support doesn't have very much... Um, like surface to connect to when it's connected to the build plate. And by adding a raft, we're giving it a very s stable, like once we have a bunch of supports, I'm just going to draw a bunch of junk supports here. All of these supports are going to have a nice, um, stable, strong surface. And then also when I remove this raft from the build plate, I like this particular raft because it has this ledge. I can get my spatula underneath it and pry it up without damaging anything. So um, so I use a raft. I use this one. Um, rafts are a matter of debate. Some people hate this raft. Um, I love it. I've been using it for years. I use it for everything. It works well. We don't need to get into that discussion right this minute. 
So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so now I have my model. <coughs> he's he's floating in the air, which is what I need, right? We need him. We need him lifted off the build plate in order to do supports. Um, I'm looking at him, and let's say mm, I know we don't have a scenario like this, but let me see if I can create one. Let's say we have a scenario like this where the model is too big for our build plate and we need to we need to make a choice about how we're going to resolve that well we have a few options we could go to the scale button and we could scale this model down we could say 50 percent and that'll scale all of these features at 50 percent at the same time if you turn off uniform scaling, you can then scale things in any particular axis without having it attach, uh, without having it like link to the other axes. Um, it's not something you're usually gonna wanna do um, when it's a miniature like this, but if you just have like a regular object, like a cube, and you only wanna scale the cube in one direction 200%, then you turn off uniform scaling and that will allow you to do that. So, okay, so now we're at 50% on this model. She fits on the build plate, but maybe we don't want to scale it down. Maybe we do want her at full size. So we're going to reset the scale. There's another button here that says fit to bed, and that's just going to scale just enough to make her fit. That might be perfect for you. You may look at this and be like, all right, I can live with this. Um, but maybe you don't. Maybe you do want the full scale. Maybe you want her double scale. I'm not going to do double scale right now, but there uh there lies a problem like it doesn't fit you need to make it fit you could try to orient the model so that it fit but this is not optimal in fact it doesn't even fit <laughs> right so you could try that but oftentimes that'll put you in an orientation you don't want and so we're going to look at some of these tools so we have a tool called planar cut and we have a tool called split so <clears throat> so in this case um, if we hit split, this should separate objects that aren't connected, I believe. I don't use this very often. Oh, I shouldn't have done this on this model. I'm so sorry, guys. Remember I said this model is kind of resource heavy. This may take a minute. So what I believe is about to happen is this table and maybe even this little skeleton are going to be separated out from the rest of the model and they'll become two separate objects on the build plate. Actually, a lot more, a lot more did that than I expected. So now, oh, we split into a lot of models. So now what we've done is we've actually made it so, maybe I can grab them all pretty easily here. Oops, let me undo that. Please undo that, what are we doing? Oh, there we go. Um, so we're gonna grab her and now she fits on the build plate. Perfect, we solved a problem. So here's like a third solution to the problem. So let me go back, let me recombine them. We'll talk about whether, like if you use the split function and it doesn't work, right? And because everything's touching everything. Now we have to talk about cutting the model. Now most artists will cut the model for you. Um, and it used to be that this was kind of like an arduous process. If they didn't cut the model for you or they designed it for like a Saturn size build plate, you needed to take it into Blender, take it into Mesh Mixer, take it into some other software um, and perform surgery on the model yourself, uh, <laughs> uh, which means you have to learn a whole nother process. You have to do a bunch more. So let's say, for example, we needed to uh, I'm going to continue to work with dust here. Let's say, for example, dust was too big and we needed to cut dust in half. So there is this, this tool called planar cut. And this will allow me the opportunity to make a cut right through the entire model. This used to be a, a really difficult thing to do. And now Lychee has made it so it is basically one click and it works extremely well. Well, You'll apply this and it's just going to take the two parts, cut them in half. Uh, the raft is unhappy with some of that. Now, you'll notice I've got a little extra bits here. So what will happen or can happen is there will see how I sliced, but not everything was connected. And if it's not connected, I'll give you an example of what that looks like. 
If it's not connected, it's going to split itself off. So if I take this and I cut like here, I'm going to cut, um, it's going to come out as multiple parts. <coughs> so you'll notice I have the one part, but then I have another part here and another part here. So you'll need to be aware when you plane our, when you plane our cut, it's going to cut things into bits if the alignment of that slice would do so. So just, just pay attention to how you cut things. Um, so I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sho Chen just answered the question about why we have rafts. Thank you very much. He says it helps plate adhesion, which I agree with totally. Uh, lifts models for supporting, which we just talked about. Avoids model damage when you remove it from the plate. That's also very true. Um, okay, so Nico says I'd love if the planar cut also keyed them so that they fit nicely. That Yeah, so that is a feature I know that is on Lychee's to-do list. I think they're doing bug fixes first, and then they're going to add new features. There are ways there are ways you can do that, but it's a little fuzzy, and let's not get into, like, hacking hacking apart models to bits tonight. Um, but you can, you can do some of that stuff in Blender in a few seconds. Um, but we're talking about Lychee today. So um, some of these are pretty obvious. The copy button is just going to make a duplicate of the model that you have selected. So that's easy enough. The mirror button will allow you to flip an object any direct on any axis. So if my version of dust is left-handed, we can flop him and make him holding the ax in the left hand or, you know, whatever scenario for whatever, um, uh, whatever you have to do. Measure is handy. Sometimes you can basically click a point or I don't know if it's click and drag. Here we go. You can click a point and then click another point and it's going to tell you uh, how how much distance is between the two points. That can be handy for you. Um, just know that it exists. Measure is not a tool I use often, but you might need it. Uh, yeah, so Chris says, and this is, I do this often for my own game. If you have a, like a squad of models, I hate when all of my models, let's say all of my goblins, I could only find one that I liked. I don't want to have five of the exact same goblin. So what I'll do is I'll make duplicates. So we're going to use the tools. We'll make copies. We're going to make three copies. And what I'll do is I will mirror two of them. So let's go to the mirror tool here. I'll mirror two of them like this. And then what I'll do is I'll scale one just a little. You know, just to make it different from the other. So then when I scale another one, then I have, you know, a couple bigger, a couple smaller. They're they're the same, but they're not exactly the same. And it's enough for me to not have that repeating pat pattern. So you can kind of fudge a, a squad of units to kind of make them feel a little more unique um, using that mirror tool. So I use it for that reason, for sure. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Beginner Gunham said, I would love a feature to view, hide the interface panels in Lychee and also full screen versus maximize. Um, so yeah, the full screen I can't speak on. As far as the panels, um, in this case, the I mean, uh, I guess I don't know that hiding these panels provide me anything. Um, but you can definitely hide panels in this in this section. So you can, you can kind of minimize some of this, but not all of it. Um, I think that's everything on our layout page. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is uh, pretty much all we need. So let's bring dust back in on the, the thing. Let's start taking a look at the meat and potatoes. Let's look at, let's look at where we're gonna be spending most of our time in lychee. So we're gonna go through my quick workflow. Uh, we're gonna start on plate. We're gonna put them on the plate. We're gonna go to magic. We turn off the floor, we lift and raft. Uh, every time I do orientation, I tend to just tilt the model back. I don't have any specific measurement for degrees. I eyeball this, but I've been doing it a long time. You can do this in whatever way you think is appropriate. Okay. <clears throat> Here, this is where we get to the good stuff. This is, this is where we can save the most time. We can be the most effective. Um, this is where we do work. So now we are in the prepare slash 
Uh, Nero, thanks for coming. Man, it's 3 a.m. Appreciate you coming, man. Um, so this is where we we do our supports. And so I wonder, I don't know. <laughs> Active presets. I don't know if I can reset to defaults. I don't know if they have that as an option. Um, yeah, Nero, it should be available hopefully for two weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, okay. So I'm going to give you my, uh, this class isn't about supports, but I'm going to give you my recommended settings. Use them. Don't use them. Do whatever you want. I recommend them. They're great. I promise they're awesome. Uh, but we're going to talk about some confusion that I've seen come up and it's very hard to describe to somebody in a text over discord. And we're going to talk about this right now. So when we have, I'm just going to place an arbitrary support. So we have a support. That support right now in my in my uh, work area, my workspace, is a light support. If I change or if I load, actually, you know what? I have I have a model. Uh, this might be this might be doable. I have a model that was supported by somebody else. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it very quickly here. Hopefully I can find it fast without wasting too much of your guys' time. Star Wars 2 for Braven, blah, blah, blah. Come on, let's go. Found it. All right. Uh, a warning. I do not advocate for this quality of pre-support work. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, don't print these. Don't print these files. If you, if you come across them, um, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I just don't want you guys to think this is a good, an example of, of something to, uh, work towards, but I'm going to load the tail. It's the tail base supported. Okay. Tail tall base supported. Okay. <clears throat> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I will, you know, I'll do that and then I'll set these new settings right now. Let me get through this part here. And then I guess there's a there's a gear up higher. I saw that gear and I hadn't clicked it on. Okay. So um, so if we're looking at the supports on this model, it's very likely that <laughs> it's very likely that um these supports don't match my presets. And, um, and so when I click on this, we're going to look at two different things and it's going to be very confusing to somebody who doesn't know this exists. Okay. So when I click on one of these supports, you'll notice that it says heavy. Now it says heavy with this little star next to it. And what Lychee is telling you here is that this mod or this support doesn't match your supports but heavy is the closest one it can identify. So my supports, my heavy supports uh, is a 0.4, oops, I just ruined that, is a 0.4 millimeter tip, a two millimeter length, and a 1.2 millimeter diameter. When I click on this one, all of those settings are different. Those don't match at all. And so it doesn't know what size to tell you that support is. And so it says heavy with a star, okay? Now what happens is when you're going in and we're about to witness that. When you're going in and typing in your presets, it's gonna indicate things that are not correct to what you're doing. And, and, it, and if you don't know this exists, it looks really confusing. Uh, so apparently I should be able to, oh, maybe the wrong one. It says the gear next to the words heavy heavy mini oh these are mini reset reset hey all right perfect all right i apologize i should have done this beforehand but uh i did not so my apologies let me do that very quickly um light should be okay fantastic Okay, so we're going to talk about how to establish presets. And uh, this is another thing where I don't use what comes directly from Lychee. I use very finely tuned settings that I've worked on for the last couple of years to get right. So 
<clears throat> when I do my light supports, I have settings that are 0.22 tip diameter, two millimeter tip length, and 0.8 diameter. Let's say I'm doing medium. On medium, I do a 0.28 and a, and this is where it's gonna get weird, and a one millimeter diameter. And do you see how this changed? Like I'm setting the preset for medium, but it took me to another medium preset. And this gets really confusing for people. <coughs> so it appears as if I'm not making changes, that I'm not setting a medium. But what you do is you just ignore what it does. So I do a 0.28, I do a tip length of two, and I do a diameter on my medium of one. Oops, I hit the wrong button, I'm so sorry. Uh, 0.28, tip length of two, diameter of one. Now. Right now, this is indicating medium mini, but I'm going to force this to be medium by going by going here, going to medium. We go to the gear and then we override. Now, those settings have become my medium settings. Now, you'll notice that it's highlighting two different um, two different ones. The reason for that is these two settings are now identical. But I have a I have a very specific difference, and we're going to talk about that. So when I set my supports in Lychee, I want to have a setting for mini supports. So mini supports are done using Control and Alt. When I do mini supports, I never, almost never, have a perfectly straight tube like this. What I use is of a, a wide diameter. So it looks like a little, a little funnel or, you know, something like that. So it's got a wide base. You'll notice that I change this tip diameter and all of a sudden it's indicating that this support is light with a star, but we know it's medium. We started with medium. We didn't change the tip diameter. It's still medium. Lychee doesn't know which support it is because it's outside of our presets. And so it just tries to indicate the closest one it can think of. So we're going to ignore the fact that it says light star and we're going to override medium again. And what we've done is we've changed, we've changed the full size supports and overrode. And now we've changed the mini supports and we're overriding again. What this is going to do is this is going to allow me to here. I'm going to change to a light. You're going to see it's going to get skinny. I'm going to change to a heavy. It's going to be skinny not like a wide base, but I'm going to change to medium. And now you notice my medium has that wide based, you know, that wide based bottom with a 0.28 top. But there are also scenarios where it may be appropriate for me to also have, see, I can't have that thin, that thin base here. So then what I do is I set the diameter to 0.28 and I override medium mini. Now I set the name medium mini, but I override there. And so when I need to change between the two, I have a shortcut where I can change without having, I can just change it to what I need when I need it. So when, when I'm doing work, I have the ability with one hand, uh, T Slater has a, a question about this. Um, I'll show you here in a moment. I have the ability with some hotkeys that I set where I can change this as needed on the fly without having to go and click and figure it out. Right. And I'll show, I'll show you that. Um, T Slater asks, how can you drag a new support to connect to another? All you do is you hold alt. So I'm going to click on the, the model and then I'm going to click where I want it to connect to the other support. And that will do that for you. If you have pro and you, let's say, Let's say we have a support here. We no longer want this support to connect to the one to the left. We hit space bar to go to an advanced editing mode and we can just click and drag the knuckles around where we want them and move it over to another support. So hopefully between both those tricks, that answers your question. Um, okay, so we are gonna look at some hotkeys. Now that we've we've seen how to set these presets, in fact, let me let me set these up here. Um, the way that I want them. I do 0.8 diameter on lights. 
intentionally. Uh, let me override. Actually, yeah, let me override light. I think I just ruined it. Let's see, 0 0.22, 0 0.8, override. Sorry, I'm a mess right now. Override light. Okay, so now my lights are are overridden, but I also want to make sure that I am that I'm changing this light to have that wide base. So I I create a mini support. I select the mini support. I change my tip diameter all the way up, and then I override again. Now you could probably do this in one go if you figure out how. You only have to do this once though. So now my light is set, my medium is set, and I need to set my heavy. On my heavy, I do a 0.4. For my tip length is still two, and my diameter is 1.2. Now I'm gonna override, I keep clicking this. I'm gonna override heavy. And now I need to create this support. So I'm gonna change it to heavy. I'm gonna change my tip diameter and I'm going to override heavy again. Now I have light with a fat base, medium with a fat base, and heavy with a fat base. I also have light, medium, and heavy. So we're good. Okay, so let's have a look at how I'm using these hotkeys. So we're gonna go to preferences, and we're gonna go to shortcut editor. Okay, I use very few shortcuts, but I use ones that the ones I do use, I use all the time. Now, shortcuts are just the fastest way for you to to like n navigate around doing your work, but you have to memorize all of your shortcuts. So that could be a little difficult. So um, I, I don't ever use new scene, open file, none of this stuff. I use save all the time. Right. So but that's no different. Control S um, undo redo, select all, all of those are the same for every program. You guys know I don't auto orient, um, <clears throat> but there is uh, one we're gonna look at that is super important. Uh, I don't use these hotkeys, but you're welcome to memorize them and use them. Um, I'm gonna revert these to default. Okay, <clears throat> so you'll notice and here this is where we really get into like the most useful hotkeys now for me i don't use these saved views for anything i don't use the camera hotkeys for anything i do everything manually with the mouse if you love these hotkeys and you want to set them by all means do that i don't use them at all when i'm working you can kind of see how i navigate is everything done with the mouse so i don't care at all about any of these except for one. And this one is F. So I refer to F as focus. What this does is this will orient your camera exactly where your mouse is. And I'll, I'm gonna get back to that because I need to show it and I need to show how powerful it is. It fixes a lot of camera issues if you're struggling. Um, this is the only setting that I use in Lychee is this F key and it is magic. It's literally magic. But what we're gonna look at <clears throat> is going to be our supports. This is where we do most of our work. This is where we wanna make the most efficient use of our shortcuts. <clears throat> so apply a light preset. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think Chris is the one that taught me about F and it changed everything for me. Um, okay, so this is to apply the light preset. I, ch I changed this one to just the number one. Now I know that shortcut is assigned to top view. I don't care, right? I don't care about this or this or this because they I don't use those features. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna trash can those and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna change my light to one, not tab, one tab, sorry, this is messy. Change it to one, enter, two to two, enter, three to three, enter. And I don't use, um, I don't use control one, two, and three for those. I just use one, two, and three. Now for my mini light, mini medium, mini heavy, I change these to control one, control two, control three. <laughs> so by by doing this, I've isolated. So so I have three different size tips. 
you do not have to do it the same way that I do it, where I have three different size tips and then I have the same three different size, but with a different mini. If you want five different size tips because you're getting really detailed with your support work or six, by all means, use these presets however you want. Um, but I find this to be the most effective for my work. <clears throat> so the F key, the light presets and the, um, the, the, there's a new set of extra presets that you establish yourself, the favorite presets. So those are the other ones. Also one more key right here is bracing supports. I changed this to just a B. I have no reason to have alt B, B is fine. So these are all of the settings that I go through and change. <clears throat> and I don't use many of the other ones very often personally. So we're going to look over some of these hotkeys really quickly. So I'm going to place a support. It happens to currently be light. I want it to be medium. I hit two. Sir Ace, welcome, man. I know Sir Ace from, from uh, over on the Lychee server. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do supports on this model. And you'll notice I don't use any of the, you, you can use these if you want. There's this little, this little square at the top where you can lock different views. Um, I don't use any of that. In order to zoom in, I use my mouse wheel. In order to rotate like this, where I'm not moving the camera around, I use right click. And in order to move the camera around, I hold shift and I click my mouse wheel and then I can move my camera around. Then I'll take you a little time to get used to, to those controls, but they become very intuitive after a couple hours of, of using them. So, so let's say I place a support here. It's a medium, but I want it to be heavy. I hit three. I place another support, heavy, 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 heavy. And then here I want a medium. So I hit two. Uh, no center scroll wheel click for you. Um, I do have I do have a center scroll 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 wheel click, uh, and this is to. Oh, I guess it's the same. I guess I I use shift, but maybe you don't have to. I don't know why I do that. Maybe it's because other software requires you to use shift. Um, but yeah, your center, your mouse wheel click when you push down on the mouse wheel allows you to drag your camera around. So right click to rotate, mouse button or mouse. Uh, wheel to to drag so you, with those two and a zoom you can pretty much control everything on your camera so here i want this to be medium uh yeah we talked about f <laughs> we're, we're gonna get to f here uh these ones i want light uh and so all i'm doing is i'm changing these as i'm placing them I want that one heavy not for any particular reason just for demonstrations i want that one light i want that one medium heavy now here's the trick. <clears throat> You'll notice that each one of these supports has a different thickness. The reason I use these diameters, right? I use a 0.8 diameter on light, a 0.1 on medium, and a 0.1, 1.2 on heavy is <clears throat> two, I mean, it's twofold. One, you don't need a 1.2 on heavies and you don't need a one on a light. Like you don't need the, the, um, the diameters to be different. Technically, they'll still do the same job. I could set all of these to one millimeter diameter and they'll all function identically the same. However, if I have an entire model and all of the supports are identically sized, I will have a very hard time figuring out which model is which weight of support, right? I, I can't tell which ones of these, not easily, which ones of these are heavy, which ones of these are mediums, and which ones of these are lights. And so all of a sudden I have to click it and look. Okay, that's a heavy. Click it and look. That's a heavy. Click it and look. So you end up having to go through this process of trying, I guess I switched them all to heavy by accident, but uh, you go through this process of trying to figure out which supports which just by looking at it. Or you have to click it and it's a whole process. Now, if I do this and I change some of these and we have all different sizes, I can look at these and automatically know these are heavy, these are medium, these are lights without clicking anything. I know which support I'm looking at by having these different sizes. So this is just a handy way for me to like increase my workflow 
um, my, you know, be able to identify what I've done, what I'm doing and do it quickly. So, um, so right now I'm just using one, two and three in order to change these. So let's say we're doing a fan and we want, and we want a bunch of these minis. I'm going to hold alt shift and that's going to create a, an anchor at the base of the last support I placed. And this will allow me to click, 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 and make this fan really fast. Now I can go back and I can change the sizes of these. But let's say, let's say we're starting to get really clumped. It's like too much going on down here and I need to thin it out a bit. There may be a scenario where I want to, yeah, I'll, oh man, I'm glad you came and learned something, Ace. You're over here schooling everybody. I'm glad I got to teach you something. Uh, this is super handy. It's just very click placement. And it doesn't have to be with many supports. If you place a full size support and then alt shift, you can continue to place full size supports off the same anchor. Um, but let's say here, I don't like, I don't like how clumped we're getting and I want to thin it out. Yeah, so you select the support you want to have the anchor, and then you hold Alt and Shift, and then you can just click as many times as you want with the mouse while you're holding it. It's not toggle, you'll have to hold. Yep. Um, so I wanna thin this out, and the way I'm gonna do that is by converting some of these to my other type of support where it's the same thickness all the way down. Um, Shim Dory, Shim Dory says 3d molding i'm not sure um i'm not sure what you're referring to um so if you could clarify i'm happy to answer um so you can see i am able to choose between that wide based that wide based mini and that narrow based mini just by selecting um and i do this i wish i could show you with my hand i put my palm on control and i hit one two and three or i take my palm off control and i hit one two and three about an hour, excuse me, about an hour of doing this, and it's just gonna become second nature. You're gonna be changing the sizes of your supports without even realizing you're doing it, just out of out of need and necessity. So, okay, I'm gonna bring in a complex model. Actually, oh, I think I, I, I've lost track of my complex model. We're gonna bring in something a little, with a little more meat to it. Let's go back to, to Dan's Lion's Tower model here. I don't remember what I did with it. I had it loaded up. Where is it combined? Here it is. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to need a little, sorry. Got to, we got to do the do baby. My Mountain Dew is, is clear. <laughs> okay. I was playing around with one of my lights earlier since we got a second and I, I have it set to blue. It's like an RGB light that I had set to blue and it makes your face look crazy. I got to kill sometimes. So I did this. <laughs> That's terrifying, right? <laughs> We're still waiting for this model to load in here. There we go. All right. Okay. So you notice first thing I do on plate, I get the model where I want it. I'm going to change the build volume to something bigger so that we don't, I don't like having those, those out border lines or whatever. Now let's say we are doing supports and we look inside here. This is not how the model comes from, from Lion Tower. It comes all separated and, and pre-supported and all that stuff. Uh, but let's say, for example, I need to get in here and all of a sudden I'm, I'm just going to start messing with my camera a bit. And you'll notice, let's say I really want to precisely look underneath this hair. Well, you'll notice I'm having a really hard time. And the reason for that is the, the camera has like a focal point. And by dragging everything around and moving stuff and zooming in and out, I've set that focal point way back here. And that's not where I need it. And so when I'm trying to rotate, I'm just not able to look at the object I'm trying to see. And the way I can fix this, and this is the magic. So Sir Ace knows, Chris Catlett knows, right? This is 
this will this change everything about camera control. I put my mouse over a location and I hit F as in frog. I've just shake, taken that that camera focal point and I've placed it exactly where I want to look, where my mouse is. And now when I rotate, it rotates around that exact point. So if I get stuck back here and I'm and I'm trying to and I'm trying to get, I know I just blew a whole bunch of people's minds, right? I'm trying to get in here and I really want to just be looking at this really tight area. I'm going to hit F right here. And now I rotate and I can work around inside this tight area. Uh, so beginner says if you use blender, it's period in blender um, or zero. So yeah, match whatever's the most convenient for you. And you can definitely do that in the presets. But this is an absolute game changer when it comes to camera control. Because <clears throat> it's really easy on a complex model to be moving around. I start at the foot. I work, I work, I work, I work, I work. I rotate, I work. I zoom out. I get on her face. But my camera orientation is still over on this other side over here. And so when I'm rotating, I'm trying to rotate behind her hair, but I'm having a really hard time getting in there. Place my mouse, hit the F key, and boom, I'm looking at her hair. It's amazing. Um, I have a space mouse. I do not use a space mouse. Um, that is one of those things where you have to really spend a lot of time with it and get really comfortable. But I have spent 100,000 hours using a mouse and keyboard, and so I'm not easily broken free of using a space mouse. But um, they're pretty handy. I've, I've messed with them a bit. Um, I just couldn't stick with it because I'm doing everything in like a production timeline. I have to get it done quick and the, that space mouse slows me down a bit. So, um, okay. Let's look at a few other quick things. Um, uh, actually I have, I have a space mouse. I'll show you on camera real quick. So, so this is a space mouse. This one is called the space explorer and what you can do, all of these these buttons can be programmed to different functions in like Blender or something like that. I'm sure in Lychee you might be able to do something there, but this is kind of the key. This, uh, this rotates and it will rotate your object in 3D space. It tilts and it will rotate your object on a, on a different axis in 3D space. Uh, and you can press it. And, and there's, so basically you can control a 3D object just by rotating this little, this little knob in all different directions. So instead of me having to use a mouse and drag and click and move and drag, um, I can just use this one little very specialized um, kind of knob here. And then there's zoom in and out, and then there's programmable buttons, uh, copy paste buttons, stuff like that. So this is a, is a handy thing to have. They're not particularly cheap. If you were to say be a sculptor and you were using a pen, you would have the space mouse in your left hand and you would be sculpting and, and able to control all of the camera with your space mouse while you're sculpting. Because I'm not an artist and I don't sculpt, even though I wish I could, um, this I haven't found to be very handy for what I do. Um, but if you ever get it in your mind, you wanna try sculpting, um, these are handy. I actually found this on Facebook for like 20 bucks, um, which is an absolute steal. Like impossible to find that kind of deal, but you might be able to find them used on Facebook if you look, or even eBay. Um, so I don't use it, but it's still a pretty, a pretty cool, pretty cool tool to have. So, okay, let's look at hollowing real quick. Um, <clears throat> there isn't much here that you shouldn't look at and just be like, yeah, I, I just got, I got really lucky. It was a guy who got it for free because he was a teacher and he didn't know what to do with it. Nobody knew how to use one in our area, so he couldn't even sell it. So he just threw it up for 20 bucks and I jumped on that. All right, so in hollowing, this is very straightforward. There's nothing really about this that um, that's going to be difficult. I'm gonna bring in another model that's not this one for um, for a hot little hollowing tutorial. So let's just bring in a nice big cube here. Let's bring in a nice big cube. Okay, so let's talk about hollowing and the hollowing options for a second. We're going to start with hollowing 3D. If you have lychee free, you do not have access to hollowing 3D. 
this is a good reason to buy Lychee Pro. This feature is a good reason to buy Lychee Pro. Oh, one thing I forgot on supports. We're going to talk about this real quick. So with supports, if you hit the space bar, you get access to advanced editing. With advanced editing, you will be able to control every aspect of your support, every angle, <clears throat> um, every knuckle, all of it. You'll be able to control all of this. And one awesome tip I have that makes some of this work really handy is if you hold control while dragging around parts of, of the tip. So you'll notice the tip will always snap to the model. I can't drag it off the model. If you hold control while moving this tip in advanced editing mode, you can force that tip to stay in 3D space. So you can create more advanced structure using this the, the control option while moving around the tip of a support. So if I needed to, I, I don't have an, a great example for why or how. Also, don't forget these are very handy to use to scale your support. Um, yeah, so this, this is very handy. So you'll see I actually created a very unique support structure. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to then build off that support structure, I could continue to create whatever architecture I needed to get to wherever it is I needed to get. So sometimes it's hard to get there and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, I got allergies that are messing with me. I can almost just build crazy architecture just by, here's a, here's a really good one that I use all the time. When you hold alt, you'll see that I, that I have like a, uh, it's like a, it's a brace. So if we have two supports and I hold alt, I can brace in between these two supports, but I can also double click and it will create a support all the way down to the base. So earlier when I was talking about shortcuts, I had a bracing shortcut. Oh, there's a few things I missed. I jumped too soon to hollowing. We're going to continue on this path. <clears throat> there's a bracing shortcut right here. So you can hit this bracing button. You hold shift to select two supports and hit bracing. It will only brace those two supports. <clears throat> but I am a huge fan of hot, like short keys. So I use the B button to do that. So when I create, when I create two supports like this, I can select the two. Su <laughs> I, I hit hide. So sorry. There we go. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so. You can use this trash can to get rid of two supports. <clears throat> and I hit B to create the supports, but I only create those supports uh, across just those two by hitting, by hitting that B button. So when I have a big model and there's tons of supports on it, I can selectively choose where... I'm fat fingering everything here. There we go. Uh, I can selectively choose where those supports are are placed instead of just having the whole, the whole model auto brace. I keep saying supports bracing instead of having the whole model auto brace, I can selectively brace or I can selectively delete bracing using this trash can. So sometimes when you have, let's say you have 600 supports on a model and then you hit auto brace. The, the final result of that auto brace isn't perfect. It's, it's a shortcut. It gets you to a place where you need to go, but it's not perfect. <clears throat> and so you're going to have to go in and edit a lot of bracing. And what you might be inclined to do is click, delete, click, delete, click, delete. And you'll have to go through and you'll it'll be manually deleting supports or what you'll be trying to do is like finding a way to select. You'll notice I didn't select all the, all the braces there. So you'll be trying to find ways to select and delete what you can do instead. Select the two supports you don't want the braces in between and hit the trash can. Boom. Easy peasy. Uh, so I do that and the opposite of that constantly when I'm working. Creating specific supports between specific, specific braces between specific supports by hitting B or using the bracing button. Uh, my personal opinion, take it for whatever it's worth. I never use the parent button. Or when I say never, it's... 
It's like less than 1% of the time do I use the parent button. There are a few reasons for that, and it's probably something I'm not gonna dive into too much, but <clears throat> let me explain what it does, and then you can kind of make choices for yourself on whether or not you want them. Uh, yes, AMD, I will. it will be saved on my VOD. It should be saved for two weeks. And then I think it's an okay class, so we'll probably post it up on YouTube too until I can I can create like a more edited video. Okay, so we have a bunch of supports. We're gonna just make a mess here. There's a couple, man, I almost missed so many features I gotta show you guys. Okay, so this is really messy and I don't want it so messy. The parenting will take and combine some of these overlapping supports and create braces and you kind of see it, it'll sort of optimize things. So instead of, I'm gonna, I gotta bring in a model here. Okay, so instead of having, let's see, I want do, 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 five, here we go. I'm just gonna create a clump. So instead of having 25 supports all clumped like this, the parenting key is what they refer to as optimizing in the magic button. When you hit parent, it's gonna take and combine some of the bases. You'll notice at the bottom now, instead of 25, we only have 13. So this may seem really handy. And in some cases it, it really is. But if I go in and I print this and I realize that her head failed, I can't easily edit this this nest that it made. Um, I, I can't change the location very easily. I can't undo this ever again. It can't be undone. As soon as I save and close Lychee, I can never recover these back to my original. The only way I can recover them right now is by hitting the undo button right now. But anything beyond that, and you can never go back to this. You'll have to delete them and start over. There's also some struggles when it comes to like removing an object that's been heavily parented, but we don't need to get into that right now. You just need to know what the feature is and how it works. Just know that I don't use it very often, um, but you can use it if you want to. I just prefer not to. Um, all right. Yeah. So uh, thanks for coming. We'll see ya. Uh, Invictus said, what about saving it as a scene? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. Everything you save in Lychee is saved as a scene. Uh, so you save scene. Uh, the only other alternative is to export it as an STL. So it, it does save, everything saves as a scene. Um, but if you want to be more specific about your question, um, yeah, so you can do that. You can save it as a scene, come back and edit, but you will not be able to undo parenting if you do. So parenting is like a permanent adjustment of the supports. So if I do this and I save it and I close everything down and I reopen, I can't hit control Z to undo because the history, the undo history is gone. As soon as you close a program, the undo history is, is erased. And so there's no way for me to undo this again. I will have to go back, delete everything and replace all those supports in order to, uh, in order to recover something that might have been problematic as a result. So I find that it's just best for me to not, to not use the parenting button and for me to selectively choose when I want to create those optimized supports. So that's when I'll do mini supports and I'll create those optimizations manually while I'm doing the work. And these supports can all be really easily edited. I place them exactly where I wanted and I can easily move them around because I created them. And so use that, take that for what it's worth. I don't use the parent button, but if you want to, please do. It's perfectly fine. Um, just know that if you parent everything, you'll create a, a very rigid structure. Um, I, I don't want to get into the details of like all the physics of why it's rigid, but you'll create a very rigid structure, like support structure and removing a model from a very rigid support structure can be difficult and it requires a lot more force to remove and you may find yourself breaking models or um or even like i've cut myself trying to press so hard on a on like a big base that had all parented supports trying to get it to pry off um, it just creates a lot of rigidity in the model sometimes it's appropriate for that but i find that most times i'm happy to be 
telling the software what to do instead of allowing the software to do what it wants. Um, one trick that maybe you guys don't know that I find very handy, it's going to be quite difficult to display on screen right now because I've got like a UI scale that's that's kind of off. Also, my chat's in the way. Let me hide that chat box for a second. You can, you can see there's five different options here. I pretty much never use the auto, right? Because it's auto supports. But I do like having all of these other options open because I use them for every model. If you hold shift, you can open all of these at the same time. Now on my screen, it's hard because I'm, I've, I've shrunk my screen down to 1080, but on my 1440 or 4K screen, I can see all of these menus all at once. And it's really nice to just have access to everything. Let me, uh, let me put this model back in place here. We're gonna talk about two relatively new features to Lychee and they are absolute game changers when it comes to bulk support placement. On a model like this, uh, oops, on a model like this, you would want to place a lot of supports on this bottom side, or let's say on a, uh, big, oh, big announcement. We are doing a 5,000 member giveaway on our Discord server. Right now we're at 4,100. And as soon as we hit 5,000, we are going to have a ton of free printable content to give to our community as a thank you from a ton of amazing artists. So that's that's our big announcement for the day. I did it at the beginning, but if you're just catching up now, um, that's the announcement. Okay. One very, very powerful tool, support painting. So the way this works is you can click to place a support and hold down your click and drag. And now I'm going to be creating supports everywhere I drag. I make adjustments to that with the interval. So right now I have a 1.5 interval, but let's say I want to change it to one. Now it will place supports in one millimeter increment increments. And you'll see they're tighter together. So if I want, let's say, if you guys are aware of the double row method, we know that we want really tight supports here. We want really tight supports here, really tight supports here. But as we start to get further away, we want less tight supports. And having to click 100 times over and over and over to create this sort of like structure can be really tedious. So what I do is I'll change this to like three millimeters and I'll just draw, I'll just draw scribbles in here and it will create a nice less dense support structure. And then for the for the more dense ones, I'll change it to 2.0 and I'll draw a little closer to the base and I'll make a little more dense support structure. And then down here, I might do 1.4 and I'm just creating like more density, just bulk, bulk support placement to hold up a model, but I'm able to change that density. Also, this is a handy feature. I hope they improve this feature. <coughs> Excuse me. One second here. <clears throat> I hope they improve this feature. There's one aspect to this feature that would change everything for us. But right now, it's still handy to have. So let's say, for example, I want to place supports only on the edge of this model. But if I'm kind of sloppy with my mouse, you'll notice that some of these are going to end up on the, on the top edge. Some are gonna end up on this bottom edge. We have a max angle here. And what that does is that restricts where supports will land based on the angle of the first placement. Place on perimeter would be great, but the improvement that I could see to max angle is also a magnet option. So what we'll get into that in a second. What max angle does is it restricts the angle at which a support will be placed based on the first location you placed your first support. So we have an angle like a face here at whatever degree it's at. And what this max angle will do is it will restrict my ability to place supports up the side because it's it's up this, you know, it's up at a, at a steeper angle. So what I can do is I can change the max angle to let's say, five degrees. And when I click here on this bottom, no matter what I do, where I go, it will only place supports on the 
<clears throat> on the surface that is within five degrees of angle of my first placement. So I can draw all down here, but you'll notice like almost none of these are drawing anywhere else. I'm moving really fast, so I might be tweaking it out, but I should have had a hundred supports and, and nobody would ever scribble like I was just doing. But, but generally speaking, you'll see that I've limited the placement to only this, this sort of like bottom area. So, and you can change, you can change the degree at which it's willing to do that. Um, you can have it be one degree, but you're going to have a hard time. Like all of these are on a one degree plane, but you'll notice I can't draw anything close to the edge. So you can play with that, but that's what this max angle is, is see, it won't draw up on the side at 40 degrees. But if I change it to 180 degrees, it'll allow me to draw anywhere without any issue. So Support painting is so handy, so, so, so handy. I do not use it for edge placement. It's just not quite there. Uh, yes, we're using 5.1.8. This is this is by clicking and dragging. This is support painting is what they call it. So clicking and dragging. Next, we have an equally very, very handy, and I do do edges on flat things with this, which is the it's called inline supports. It works very much the same way as brushing, as in it, it will bulk place supports for you, but instead it will only do it from in a line between one point to another point. So if I place a support, let's say on this edge, and I wanna support this edge all the way up, I select my first support, I hold shift, <clears throat> And then you'll see it will show that placement where all of my supports will go perfectly straight line all the way up the edge. T Slater asks, what is the pressure thing? The pressure is if you have a tablet and you're doing supports on a tablet with a pressure pen. Now, I can't demonstrate that because I don't. But um, if you're doing supports with like a touch screen with a pen um, or you have one of those um, into not into us. Yeah. Or the Cintiq. Or like the Huion. Uh, Sir Ace asked also if I use a 3D mouse. I do not. We talked about that here a little bit ago. Um, but line supports can be very, very handy if you're if you're doing boxes or or like um, if you plain cut a model and you have to support the cut that you made. You can you can use this very often. Also, if you just want to bulk support on the bottom of a mini, it's really easy to just do some very like structured line supports on the bottom so that you have like a really a really clean organized structure that line support is is very handy and then it also has intervals just like the support painting option um, i use these tools as often as i can get away with them because they're just absolutely time saving and when i'm placing stuff by hand i can't do math i can't place uh, yes, Sir Ace, the hot key for that is shift. In fact, it says use shift key on it. Um, I can't place supports exactly one millimeter apart by doing it by hand. I can come close. I can eyeball it, right? I can try. These are about a, a millimeter and a half, the squares. Um, I mean, I could try, you know, but it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pixel perfect. When you do these line supports, it's exactly 1.3 millimeters between each tip, period. So you can have a lot of precision using these, these line supports. Or if you just need to measure something, there is a measuring tool, but sometimes you, you don't want to switch back out, go to the measuring tool, click here, click here, do all of that. You could use line supports at a smaller increments. Or you could use the interval here and you could you could do like a little impromptu measure. Why am I not getting supports here? Here we go. So here I know I'm, I'm running at 1.3 in increments. I have uh, 11 supports, so that's whatever, 14 millimeters or whatever. <clears throat> yes, you need a raft. Uh, great, great questions. Awesome. Amazing. Okay. You guys are reminding me of stuff. I forgot. Beginner Gundam. You need a raft period every time period. If you're using supports, there is no getting away from using, using a raft. Um, so yes, every time you use line support, you are going to have a raft attached. Um, if you don't, you're doing it wrong. That's, that's the best I can give you. Boxman brought up something that I really want to touch on. And 
uh, and we're going to touch on it now. So can you use line supports with mirror? No. Can you use line supports with brush painting? No. So, uh, excuse me. Can you use brush painting with mirror? No. Can you use line supports with mirror? No. Uh, but we do need to talk about mirror because this is another one of those instances where the the universe, the sky opened up and the angels sung from the heavens as soon as I was introduced to this feature. I use mirror with bases and I have to do a lot of bases as you can imagine. So let me show you something amazing. So we're going to, of course, we go here, lift it. We're going to tilt it because we need it tilted. Boom. Okay, it is time to do the double row method. If you don't know the double row method, please go to YouTube and Google double row method. It should be uh, on our YouTube channel or look it up. Okay, we're going to do the double row method. And I'm not going to get into it too deep right now, but I'm going to do it very quickly. It used to be you would have to click all the way around the base just like this. With the mirror, you can mirror on X and all of a sudden you have to do half as much work. Now, if your model is not symmetric, mirror will do really weird things. So if we were to mirror on a different axis, you'll notice mirroring doesn't exactly <laughs> function the way that I want because it's not symmetric on, on the Z axis, right? It's only symmetric, base is only symmetric on the X or Y axis. Um, but I can save, oops, I'm still on Z. I can save a ton of effort. You know, doing this is not fun to have to go through and place these supports by hand. Well, now I only have to do it half as much because of this. Also, when I'm adding my second row, I do the exact same thing. These are heavies on the second row. This is called the double row method. And then when I'm placing all of my bulk supports, I could line draw it like this and that would be okay i tend to like be particular about my placement so i don't and you can see i do half as much work to get a full base supported so in less than a minute i can have a base supported with a double row method by using mirroring um so that is <clears throat> that is very very handy to have um hey thank you posted my video all right so uh, I can't think of anything else. Island detector is also very handy. Let's bring up a model. Uh, let's see here. Clients. Okay. So sorry, guys. I actually don't use the suction detector but we'll talk about suction detector because Sir, because Sir has brought it up. I think we do need to discuss it. Um, we'll talk about the ins and outs of it. Let's, you know, let's talk about what it's used for and why. This class is longer than I expected, but we got plenty to talk about. So let's keep going. Um, I'm trying to find a model to show you guys here. Here we go. We're gonna use. Oh, I know what we'll use. I know what we'll use you guys. I got it. So we're going to bring dust back in from Lion's Tower. And I just have to find the folder. I have so many folders, you guys. It is really hard to... <laughs> it's really hard. Here we go. Okay. Um, so... There's a question. Oh, you know what? I, I hid the questions. Let's bring these questions back on screen. I'm so sorry, guys. Chat box. Here we go. Uh, okay, so I know you can't see it now, but the raft. Okay, so I don't know how to pronounce your name. Makathu says, on the topic of rafts, what is your opinion on the raft relief feature in UV tools? Does it mess with the raft too much? Um, I actually never use UV tools. It's not because it's a bad tool. It's actually like one of the best tools, but none of my work like prof as prof a professional pre-supporter can be affected in UV tools because UV tools can only be done on a 
a CTB file or an, a, an already sliced file, and I can't make edits to an already sliced file to, to distribute. And so I've never actually needed to mess with UV tools for the purposes of doing work. Uh, so I wish I could speak on raft relief. I've never messed with it. Um, Perfect. Okay. So Chris, Chris clarified. And with what he just said, I would say, uh, it does not mess with the raft too much. It prevents the raft from creating a suction cup. Um, so technically this raft creates a suction cup. I just find that it's never actually affected anything. Um, it doesn't last for very long. Um, but it would be better if there was uh, suction relief holes in the, in the wall of the raft. So I guess UV tools can do that. So I, I can't teach that. I've never used it. I don't really know. Um, I don't really know how to, um, like address that, but it sounds like, oops, I do. Uh, but it sounds like there is a, there's an opportunity there. I didn't really get into the Island detector. I'm fairly certain that topic has been touched on enough. And if, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the Island Detector, I'm going to encourage you to go check out my pre-support classes. Um, that's where we have to start talking about actually doing supports, the where's and when's and why's. Um, but the the Island Detector is, is one of it is the number one tool I use. It's just it's not complex. It's just a lot, there's a lot we need to go over for that. Um, OK, let's talk. Let's move on to the proximity sensor. The proximity sensor is very, very simple. The proximity sensor will tell you when there are supports that are too close or overlapping the model. That's it. It will highlight them in red. You have to move them away and then they'll show no. You don't want supports that, that travel through the model like accidentally. Like see this support here, it goes right through the arm. You don't want that. And so the proximity detector will tell you Something got a little too close. Um, so that's all the proximity sensor is for. Utilities is just your lift height. So you know when I use this magic button, it will lift the object based on the utility set lift height. So I set this to five every time. Five is perfect. I've had problems in the past with four. We start to get too close to the raft and things start to fuse together. Five seems to be that sweet spot uh, that's been working really well for years. Um, raft, there are different raft selections and a lot of people like rafts are kind of this controversial topic. We'll say, um, I think this raft, which is the triangle raft is, is pretty solid, except every triangle is a suction cup also. Um, and I don't like that there is no angle on the edge of the raft to pry up like a, to pry underneath. Whereas the, this one I use has this sloped angle and this sloped angle allows you to get a get a spatula underneath and pry the model up from the plate i don't think many of the other so this one does it but i find that for one um the presets like so when you save the raft presets they, they don't save um so uh you have to go in and change this every time and i find that to be kind of uh, annoying to do but when you set this raft, you could change the thickness to like 1.5 millimeters and get that. Um, and you can get that slope to get a spatula underneath. Um, but I find it uses more resin and there's kind of no reason to use that resin since I know this creates a suction cup, but it has never really affected anything for me. Um, I can use less resin while simultaneously getting that ledge. Um, this is just not, if, if they could do the, this is called a triangle raft. If lychee does a triangle raft with that sloped edge, I'll probably switch to it. Um, it, it is an optimal use of resin, but I oftentimes try to pry this off, a, a like a build plate and it shatters. Like I have to break the raft off my build plate because I don't have like a clean entry for my, my spatula. So use whatever raft you want. I don't recommend this. Every single one of these is a suction cup. Uh, this is, uses a lot of resin. Um, this is kind of clunky. It works okay. Uh, this uses a lot of resin. This uses a lot of resin. 
it's all right if you want to use this too. It's got the slope or whatever, but it's it's kind of no different than the other one. One's round, one's not round. So use whatever you want. This is my preferred. Um, that it's your personal choice. Anytime you download something that I've pre-supported, though, this is a raft you're gonna get. Take it or leave it. <laughs> so all right, let's talk about hollowing real quick. Uh, we got a big cube. Hollowing is very straightforward. There are two different types to ho ways to hollow. Uh, 2D hollowing is a free version of hollowing. Um, when you 2D hollow, you, you don't get to see the hollowing actually happen. There's probably a technical explanation for hollowing. See you, Gundam. Well, uh, you'll be able to watch this um, VOD later. For sure. I know I know this is getting a little long, so I'm gonna try to get through the last of this stuff here quickly. Um, this is 2D hollowing. It doesn't actually change the mesh of the model at all. It is a free version of hollowing. It works okay. I'm not a huge fan of the infill, but because you can't see inside this model to place supports, infill is a necessity. Um, use it or don't use it, but if you have pro don't use it. If you have Pro, use 3D hollowing. And what 3D hollowing does is it literally changes the mesh inside the model. And uh, did I not? I was pretty sure I did. There we go. Update. There we go. Hey. All right. So now our cube is hollow. And, uh, and so we could... We can go inside and we could place supports inside here if we needed to, if we needed to hold something up on the inside. But we could technically scroll through, we can see the internal the internal portions. Hollowing is one of these features you need to understand before you use it. There is a video we have on our, on our channel. It is all about hollowing. We talk about the safety, we talk about the whys and hows. We're not going to get into that now. Just know that in order to hollow, you also have to place a hole in your model at least more than once. I do not recommend any holes smaller than 1.5 millimeters. But generally, if you can get away with it, the bigger the hole, the better. So if this is like um, the bottom of the model. It's going to be sitting on a table and nobody cares that there's a hole in there. The bigger the hole, the easier it is to clean. And if you prefer to cure the inside of your model, the easier it is to cure the inside of your model too. Um, a small hole like 1.5 millimeters, when you try to submerge it in, let's say, isopropyl, you get a sort of vapor lock. Air's trying to get in, isopro or air's trying to get out, isopropyl's trying to get in, and they both hit that hole, and neither one of them can do what they need to do, and nothing happens. The bigger the hole, the easier it is for those two elements to swap places. And so you use this hole to alleviate suction forces. You use this hole or many holes, right? Sometimes it'll just be a series of six millimeter holes or whatever, or use many holes to clean it. So this is really straightforward. Now, <clears throat> in this scenario, it won't make a ton of sense, but it'll be very easy to understand. Some cases, <coughs> you do want to not have a portion of the model hollowed, and you use something called a hollow blocker in order to do that. You're gonna edit the model, and then you're gonna bring in these shapes into the model. It could be a square, a sphere, or a cylinder. We're gonna use a square in this case, and then we can scale the square however we need, and we're going to update the model. And everywhere that this object exists, the model is no longer hollow. And so we can block hollowing from happening in certain areas. You want to do this again. This is <clears throat> something. Watch the um, watch the hollowing video on our channel. Um, just go to YouTube. It's Table Flip Foundry. Watch that so you'll understand where and why you might need a hollow block. But just know that this is where you would find a hollow blocking, and this is what it does. So this is everything we need to use for <clears throat> for hollowing for the most part. Couple of quick. Uh, quick mentions here there are a few things you may find handy when you're doing supports one of those is support visibility 
you may only want to see um, light supports. So these are the light supports I have on this model. You may only want to see heavy supports. Looks like I may not have any on this model, or I was using different settings at the time, um, or close to heavy, we'll say. So you can see I have a couple of close to heavy supports here. So support visibility will kind of clear a lot of the clutter. These are all my medium supports. It'll clear a lot of the clutter away so that you can kind of see what you're doing. Also, simultaneously, don't forget there's a hide and show key. You can hide certain ones with this key. Um, also, I find that once we start getting into really big models, like really big ones, and we're talking thousands of supports, and then we slap the braces on the supports, all of a sudden my video card says, no, thank you. And everything slows down. Like, and it, it's really hard to work in that environment if I have to make changes. So you can also select certain supports. So you can hide and view using the visibility. But if you go to support selection, you can actually select all of the medium supports or select all of the mini supports. So you can see I've only selected minis here. What I use pretty often is select bracing supports. Um, I have a 2080 Ti in this, in this unit. I need to upgrade that 4090s calling my name, but it's expensive. Um, so you can see I selected all of the bracing here and I'm just going to click this hide button. Now, all of a sudden you, you guys aren't witnessing this live because I, it would take me a long time to load a heavy file like that. But all of a sudden my, my computer's back to running this nice and smooth. It is a business expense, but it's a $2,000 business <laughs> expense to get that upgrade. Plus you need a new, uh, a new power, uh, power supply most times because you have to have that high amperage 12 volt power cord or whatever. Um, so I hide, so what I'll do is I'll use selection, I'll, I'll select supports and I'll hide them. And that puts me back into a mode where everything's moving really quickly. Um, cause, cause there are times where I'll get three, six, three to 6,000 braces on, on large models. And it really chugs, it doesn't like working. So just remember that you can, oh, I so change the screen. You can use the selection to select supports. You can use visibility to hide and show supports. That's uh, been pretty handy to know as well. Um, let's see. Visibility over here. I choose not to use these, but you should know you can use this visibility tab to kind of change how supports are visible. A lot of people find that handy. Uh, again, that's not that's not something I use, but that's, uh, that's there for you guys. Um, this is kind of an interesting thing. It will show you the inside mesh of a model um, and hide. So th this is complex. There's no scenario I can imagine where I would really need this. Um, unless I lied, there are now scenarios where I need this. I just learned something live on stream. Um, by hiding the outside mesh, we can now place internal supports without having to run my camera inside this just kind of blew my mind a little bit. So um, interior, exterior, you, <laughs> you use this if you have hollow models, cause this is great. Um, I don't, I, you know, I haven't seen this model in a long time. I don't believe so. Oh, I've been playing with hollowing. I did accidentally hollow this model. Yes, there we go. So yeah, this model was hollow. We were able to see the inside of the hollow. I accidentally hollowed it while I was, while I was working here. So interior, exterior, um, you'll notice that you no longer can see that option. So it's got to be hollow for that option to even appear. That's a great feature I've never seen before. I'm going to use that from now on. Another thing that you guys might find handy that a lot of people don't know, if you mouse over your slider here, there's a button here that says bottom. And if you click it, it'll do top and you can look underneath your model. Also very handy when you're placing internal supports. So if the model were hollow, I would be able to see inside the model and place supports on the inside. So that that little up and down can be super handy for getting uh, getting access to see stuff. Um, exports are very straightforward, you guys. Uh, make sure to click STL. We mostly work in STLs. Um, LYS legacy, you don't need to use that anymore. LYT is very interesting. If you say if you were to save this this file as an LYS, it would bring the Lion model as well as the supports into the LYS file. If I save it as an 
LYT file, it will only bring the supports. And when you open it, it will ask you to locate the model. So this is a way to protect, like if I were to help somebody uh, make a revision to pre-supports, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't distributing an artist's work without permission, I could save the LYT file and give them that file that only has my work on the supports on it. And as long as they own the original model, they'll be able to load that model into it. Speaking of which, we are going to, before we get out of here, we are going to talk about the object editor. This is, this is hard to demonstrate and I can't, I can't demonstrate this on stream <laughs> because uh, I don't have a model that I can think of right now where this would be a really super effective thing. The problem is the models that we do this on uh, the most often are going to be models that maybe have like a not safe for work option. And we don't want to have to re-support the model um, entirely. So an artist may give me a clothed option and a not safe for work option. We don't need to do supports on both. We can do something called object swapping. So I'm going to do a very bad object swap here. Um, and it's not going to work, but there are requirements for it. But if you have a model that is almost identical, or let's say for example, there was a mesh problem here between his thumb and forefinger. And the artist said, oh, let me correct that. Well, I've already done the supports. The artist comes in, they make a sculpting correction to this area. Well, now the model has changed and I don't want to, I don't want to have to re-support. It took me an hour to do this. I don't want to redo that hour's worth of work. So we use object swapping in order to do that. So in order to do object swapping, you look for the object editor in the layout tab and you go to this path. You click path and it's going to open up a directory where you can select another model. So here's another directory. I don't have another model. I'm going to, I'm going to break this a little bit <laughs> and I'm going to bring in a, a rifleman. I don't think this is going to work very well, but but you'll notice my line's gonna disappear. None of the supports will line up anymore because it's not the same model, but you'll see that my supports stay in place and a new STL is gonna take the place of the lion. Now, obviously wrong orientation. This isn't the right, the right you know, way to use this, but you can see all of my supports stuck and a new object came in. So you can use this object swapping to save some of your support work if you need to. This is a very handy tool. There are very specific requirements though. Um, and I've talked about those in another video um, about how to edit a model and object swap the model. You cannot change the orientation. You cannot change the bounding box. Um, you cannot change the origin and you cannot change the size of the model. And if you can make edits within all of those bounds, you can object swap anything and you'll use the supports from the old one into the new one. So, uh, so pretty, pretty darn handy tool to have. Um, another tool is the batch function. Most of you guys probably won't need access to it, but if you have a folder full of stuff that you're working on, you can use the batch function to, um, take care of lifting and adding a raft. You can use the batch function to hollow all of the models. You can use the batch function to, uh, I use it mostly to export LYS files into STL files so that my, my clients can have both versions. Um, so batch function is pretty much exactly what you think. You bring in files, you output files, and then you apply these, um, I don't know. You'll have to ask. Some of these aren't, aren't working, I think. Um, I don't know. It's been around for a while, but um, I don't use most of these. I, I export mostly STL is where I use it. Um, it's time consuming and, and not something we, it's interesting to watch live on stream. Just know batch has a bunch of handy functions and they work pretty much the way you would anticipate them working. I think that's it. You guys, <laughs> I think that's it. I do have one thing um, to show it, show you guys. And this is kind of like a little sponsorship. So Lions Tower 
has provided me a special link to their Kickstarter that they're doing right now. And I'm going to share it with you guys in chat. If you like this Kickstarter or you want to check out, in fact, I I think maybe we should, uh, maybe we should check out, uh, I'm trying to open a new window here. And um, here we go. Oh, hey, there's our website. Let's pay the bills a little bit. <clears throat> Um, I just added a new video. This is done by one of our uh, community members, Ver. Um, there's a community member named Frugal who created a bottle topper head that's puck. So if you want to have an example of your colors of your paints and you can glue them to the top of your bottles, there's a whole video here that's that's really well done. But you can kind of see um, these are what the, the puck bottle topper heads look like. Uh, they're totally free. You guys can go and download those. You can also get puck for free. You can get the cones for free. Um, but let's have a look at this Kickstarter real quick. So this is the warlock from, um, lion tower, um, adventure guild. It's a beautiful, uh, presentation here. Uh, just a really quirky, fun, magical warlock chick comes with some, really cool artwork, which I dig. Uh, everything's pre-supported. This is a great prop piece. Even if you don't have the warlock, you can use this in your, uh, in your games. Um, I believe it's probably going to come with a not safe for work, uh, version. So I have to be careful about my scrolling here. Uh, also if you miss the previous Kickstarter for the barbarian, you'll have access to the barbarian Kickstarter as an add on that's not available anymore. So if you want access to that one, uh, make sure that you click it as an add on. Also, um, there are some guys who have Etsy stores who only prefer lifetime commercial licenses and you can get yourself a lifetime commercial license. It's only 35, uh, pounds, British pounds, 35 British pounds, which is about 40 bucks, but you'd be able to sell these models, whether it's the table, the props or her for life with your commercial license. So, um, I just want to thank Dan. He, Sir Ace already backed it. That's amazing. Um, if you use that link, I get credit and that kind of helps me, you know, that pays the bills. I get a little cut. So if you guys want to support what I'm doing, but also support Lions Tower and what they're doing, um, use that link below. I will add it to the server, um, in the like news channel. I'm not going to like add everybody on it, but if you also want the link there, uh, that would be a cool place to go. This is a great artist. Uh, the, like I said, table flip foundry may not exist if it weren't for Dan and his contributions to helping me get started. Um, there are plenty of times I was ready to give up and Dan's like, no, 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 you got this. And, uh, and so he's, yeah, you guys should support him. I love the guy. And this is just a really cool project. I think it's cool. So <clears throat> make sure you check it out. Use my link if you do. Um, I think guys, I think that's everything. Oh yeah. Sir Ace got the, the barbarian as well. I think that's everything I got for you today. Um, I know some of the stuff you guys probably knew. I hope I taught you a few things that just blew your mind a little bit in the process. Um, I'm going to upload this video to YouTube. I thought it was going to be an hour turned out to be two hours. And I do feel like I rushed like the second half of this, but I think a lot of the stuff I've been talking about is pretty apparent when you're doing it. Um, if this is your first time viewing, Thank you so much for coming. Please join our Discord server. Please check me out on, on YouTube. Um, also, one last note. No obligation whatsoever, but I have created a subscription tier on our Discord server. Um, I can show you guys that real quick, but it's like $2.99. It's the cheapest that I can make it. If you guys like what I do and you want to help me support the community, you guys uh, will come to find out that my my staff uh they're not even my staff just my admins chris and and uh j3d uh those two guys as well as myself we put a huge amount of time into helping everybody in the community uh we constantly advocate for um for our community to be as friendly and wholesome as possible um i would love to be able to compensate those guys they put in hundreds of hours of work a month to try to help you guys so if you subscribe on Discord, you get some priority help from us. We're, we're always going to go to those help channels in the private subscription channels first for help. You'll also have access to a project I'm working on called Puckcraft, which is a Minecraft world where we're creating a D&D &D universe in Minecraft. 
Um, and then also you'll get sneak peeks. You will get access to content like this early or only. So I will teach classes in the voice chat there and not available for anybody who's not a subscriber. Um, we may also have some other fun stuff. So if you don't, you're still going to get help. Don't feel like this is the only way you're going to get any assistance. We're still going to help everybody on the server the same. We're just going to start with our subscribers first, make sure they get taken care of. And then when with any time we have left, we're gonna also go to the rest of the server. So I hope that you're willing to support us and then maybe I can buy these guys a couple bottles of resin or something for all of their time. So uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. That's it. That's, that's the show. Um, I really appreciate it. Keep your eye out for the 5,000 member giveaway. We have, I'm gonna look right now, I think some people joined while we were in stream. We have uh, 4,133 members right now. So it's going to be a couple weeks maybe unless a whole bunch of people you know, flood into the server. But um, right now, I think we have 22 artists that signed up to give away free stuff for the giveaway. And I will, and those are just the artists that happen to log into Discord today and notice I asked them. Um, I will also be reaching out personally to a number of artists to try to um, that that I know maybe aren't as active on the server, and we're we're gonna get them in too. So some really big names, some new artists um, that maybe you hadn't heard of before. This will give you a really good insight to some other maybe some creators you've never heard of that you wish you had. So that's what I got for you guys. So glad you came. Uh, I, this was great. This was super fun. I hope you learned a lot. I love you guys very much. See you next time. Bye.